Hi mate and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov too as usual and I said that I wouldn't get round to putting up a test server review of patch 8.11 but here I am on the test server. Uh, I managed to get it up and working after all and this is just going to be a very short video probably because there's not all that much to this patch. There aren't any new tanks and basically the main thing that's happening is that most of the tier 10 tank destroyers are being nerfed. And well, it's not that an extreme nerf, it's not like they're unplayable, but it still will have quite a big impact on the game, I think. So I'll be quickly reviewing the nerfs of each tank destroyer, or telling you which tank destroyers have been nerfed and which haven't, and what about them has been nerfed. But before we get stuck into that, I just want to quickly talk about some other changes that have been made in the game, and after that we'll quickly get to the tank destroyers. So first of all, there have been quite a few new maps added to the game. Uh, the first one being Windstorm. Here we go. This is an absolutely new map. Uh, it's a winter map with kind of a city environment. It's a bit like Lakeville because you've kind of got a quarter of the map being city and this city is looking like really a bit like Himmelsdorf or something. Very very close corners, uh, narrow streets and so on. So combat will be quite exciting down here and then you've got this left side here where you can kind of flank round. So gameplay in this map is probably going to be very interesting. But that's not all the changes because also there's been a new map added called Winter Himmelsdorf. Now basically this is just Himmelsdorf but with a winter feel to it. So you've got ice, snow and you know stuff like that. But it's exactly the same map, no new things there. And then you've got Runeburg on fire which is Runeburg but it's kind of a duskish feel to it and there's there are fires around the city and so on it looks quite nice but it doesn't really change the gameplay on the map so it's just a kind of a new touch to them and i think that's really cool like because for example on winter himmelsdorf you can now use your winter camo and uh, not only your summer camo so i think that's quite cool and i would really like to see more of this kind of stuff happening them introduce introducing uh, these kind of different layouts of the same map because, for example, imagine a uh, winter Runeberg or a summer Arctic region. I mean, why not? It could be quite cool. So, I'm really looking forward to having some games in these maps. I haven't actually played them yet. I've just seen videos of them. But, yeah, they're looking quite nice. But that's not all the changes concerning maps, because also the map port has been removed from the game. Now, I never really liked that map all that much. I mean, it was alright in heavy tanks, but in all other tank classes, the gameplay was very slow and uh, very campy on that map. So I'm not really going to be sad to see that map go. And yeah, that's more or less it. So we've also got a new game mode now. You cannot select this game mode here. What you have to do is you have to go to your settings and in the general window here, you can tick the box confrontation here. It's just another game mode like assault or encounter battle. And basically what confrontation is, is you get all tanks from one nation against all tanks from another nation. So basically it will be all Germans against all Russians you will not get jumbled up teams and I think that's very interesting and I'm really looking forward to having some games in this mode. Now I'm not quite sure about this but I think you can only get into it if you're platooned up and all your platoon members are driving tanks of the same nation. I think that's the only way you can get into this mode if you've got it activated but I'm not quite sure about that please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But anyway this is something I've been looking forward to quite a while they've been announcing it ages ago and I'm really happy that they've got this kind of it's not exactly historical battles but it's a bit more realistic and I'm really happy that we're seeing this introduced to the game. Yeah, that was basically it concerning the minor changes in this patch. Next, we'll move on to the tank destroyers, as I announced earlier. And, yeah, a lot of people, I guess, are quite afraid about the nerf of the tank destroyers. And I am, of course, too, because I myself own an AMX-50 Fosh 155. And I was quite anxious to see how this tank performed. And I've played nearly all of these tank destroyers here. And I must say, it's you feel the difference. But it's still playable, you know, it's not like you can scrap these tanks. And I think the nerf is justified because 
if you think of it, these tanks here, especially the AMX-50 Fosh, could just basically shave off 1,000 health in one shot and basically clip any tank in the game within 10 seconds if it rolled high. And yeah, I figured that was a bit overpowered. And even the Object 268 was a bit overpowered, I think. So I guess the nerf was justified. And now that these tanks have been nerfed, I think other tanks in the game will kind of indirectly be a bit buffed because of these tanks here. So let's quickly talk through the nerfs. Now first of all we've got the Object 263 which has not been touched at all. They haven't been meddling around with this vehicle whatsoever. They also haven't touched the Jagdpanzer E100 and the FV 215B183. So if you own one of these three tanks you can be relieved because nothing has changed. They'll be exactly the same. Now the Object 268 has received quite a severe nerf because they have first of all nerfed its traverse speed 2 degrees, it used to be 30 degrees, now it's only 28, I mean 28 is still fairly fast, it's not that big a difference but still. Also they've increased the dispersion of your aiming circle while moving or traversing your tank by 11 degrees, that's quite significant actually, that's like half a vertical stabilizer removed. That's quite a significant drawback actually of this tank will have after this patch and that means that taking clutch shots will not be as easy anymore however the aiming time is still the same the maximum reverse speed of this tank here was also decreased by 3 kph it's now only 15 it used to be 18 and also the penetration of the heat rounds has been nerfed to 395 millimeters that used to be 450 now 395 is still amazing and you will be basically able to waft shells through any vehicle in the game frontally but 450 was just absolutely ridiculous so i see why they did that one now all of the tanks, uh, all of the tank destroyers that used to do 850 damage per shot with these 150mm guns, like for example the Object 268, the American TDs or the Fosh, the alpha damage of these guns have all been reduced to 750 hit points only. So that means now you will only be doing 750 hit points on average damage with each shot in this gun. Now that's a, a decrease in damage of 100 hit points that's actually a very significant nerf but to kind of compensate for that they've buffed the reload uh, half a second so now you will be reloading 16.5 seconds rather than 17 seconds and that's quite nice still that has severe implications for the gameplay in this tank because you will probably know that the Russian, the two Russian tank destroyers used to have the highest DPM in the game at tier 10. It used to be 3000. Now if we mouse over, we can see that this tank has only got 2727 DPM. That's quite a significant decrease. That means that, for example, a lot of the medium tanks at tier 10 will have better DPM than this vehicle. And that will really, yeah, that, that will have quite an impact on the performance of this vehicle I feel. Now I've had a game in this tank earlier and it still felt very good, very deadly and you're still able to roll for over 900 damage but you just cannot pump out that massive damage anymore that you used to. I think the fact that this tank here now only has got 2727 dpm indirectly really buffs the object 263 because it keeps it's 3000 base DPM, which can still be enhanced by, for example, mounting the gun rammer. So I think that will really indirectly benefit this vehicle and increase its performance in battle. And I was actually aiming to get the Object 268, but now I'm going to prioritize the Object 263 because I really think that now that the alpha damage is kind of more similar and the DPM is better on the Object 263, this tank will do better but still for object 268 definitely has got its place on the battlefield and can still dish out some extreme damage in the right situation now i'm going to skip the Jagdpanzer e100 for the time being because it has not been touched we'll talk about the waffentrager e100 now and nothing all that big has been changed about this vehicle first of all it's got slower traverse speed only 26 degrees now after the patch which is not all that fast really i mean it's still acceptable for a tank destroyer but it's not very good really and also the shot dispersion of the guns while traversing the turret has changed now with the 128 millimeter gun the shot dispersion has been increased by 212 percent that's massive that means they've actually doubled 
for shot dispersion. That's quite a significant nerf, actually. With a 15cm gun, they've only increased it by 75%. Still, taking clutch shots, for example, in VC guns will be a lot more tricky after this patch. And I'm glad to see some kind of nerf on the weapon trigger LV100 because, as you probably know from watching my reviews of patch 8.9, I think this tank here is quite ridiculous actually. I think this tank still will be really good and I don't think that this increase in shot dispersion will really make this tank perform a lot worse on the battlefield. I think it will still be a really really deadly machine. Also, the 15cm gun here now does exactly the same damage as the other tier 10 tank destroyer guns, 750. Up till now, this gun here had a bit of a disadvantage, for example, compared to the Frosch's gun, because it did 100 damage less. But after these guns have been nerfed, and this gun here stayed the same, the 15cm gun will have, yeah, a bigger impact on the game, I think, because the fact that you do exactly the same damage as a Frosch, but you've got four shots and can pump them out at the same time as the Frosch can pump out three shots, will mean that you can actually do a lot more damage than the Frosch. Well, you still got the worst penetration which is quite a disadvantage but i really feel like this patch has indirectly actually buffed the waffentrager of e100 if you see what i mean next we'll move on to the american tds and basically they both share the same gun so i'll just be looking at them for a very short time because not all that much has changed really basically only the guns have been nerfed like on the other tanks using guns of this caliber the damage has been decreased from 850 to 750 and the reload time has been buffed a bit on the t110e3 it has been buffed from 18.3 seconds to 17 seconds only that's quite a lot actually that's over one second that will make a difference actually and on the t110e4 the reload time has been buffed from 21 seconds to only 19.5 so that's a uh, half no that's actually one and a half seconds faster so that's quite a quite an increase to compensate for the nerf in the alpha damage and that means that these two tanks will still be able to do quite a good amount of dpm 2647 on the t110e3 for example so yeah the american tanks i mean for example with the t110e4 after this patch I think it's going to play even more like the E100 because the gun now does exactly the same damage as the E100's gun and the armor is kind of comparable so yeah I think these tanks will be playing very very similar after this patch I mean they already do but it's gonna be quite extreme and talking of the E100 I think this nerf in the guns of the tier 10 tank destroyers will also kind of indirectly benefit the E100 because now the E100 does exactly the same alpha damage with one shot as the tier 10 tank destroyers and that's a lot and I think now that the tank destroyers don't do 850 damage anymore the E100 will be a really important damage deliverer on the battlefield as a heavy tank Next we'll move on to the AMX-50 Frosch 155 and I was especially concerned about the nerfs on this vehicle first of all because they are quite extreme and secondly because I myself own this tank and I was quite anxious to see how it pans out. Now I've had a few games in this vehicle on the test server and I can say that it's still playable, it's alright, it still performs quite well but the nerfs are very significant. First of all its armor has been nerfed. Now, the upper glaciers is still exactly the same, this big bit here. The lower glaciers has been changed from 120 millimeters to only 100 millimeters. And also, these weak spots up here have been changed. Now, I'm not quite sure how they have been changed, but they're easier to penetrate and it's easier to do damage when hitting the rangefinder and this little cupola up here or machine gun port. So, yeah, that's basically the armor for Fosh. The side armor has been decreased by 10 millimeters. The rear armor has also been decreased by 10 millimeters. You've only got 40 millimeters now on sides and rear. I think, well, that won't really make that big a difference because basically tier 3 tanks were able to penetrate your sides and rear even before the patch and after the patch that won't change however you will be probably taking a bit more damage by rt slash damage after this update now the performance of the gun has obviously been changed quite a bit because as with the other guns the alpha damage has been nerfed by 100 hit points and for the fosh i think this will have extremely severe consequences because it used to be able to one clip any tier 10 tank in the game, even the mouse, with above average damage rolls. That is not possible anymore. You are not even able to reliably clip tier 10 heavy tanks like, for example, the T110E5 with a low hit point pool 
anymore after this patch. So, as this gun has not been buffed at all, like for other guns that have received a nerf in alpha damage, have received a buff in rate of fire, the Flash's gun did not receive that, it's just been nerfed, not buffed, and I think that will have quite a big impact. For example, if we look at the DPM, now it's only 2,250, that's one of the lowest DPMs at tier 10, and I'm actually quite disappointed at this. Now, the Fosh already had been nerfed, because it used to have a 40 second reload for the entire clip, and only a 4 second delay in between shots. Now, I must say that I thought the Fosh was actually a bit overpowered, but I think this nerf might kill it a bit and make it one of the worst tier 10 tank destroyers. Oh no, I, I've just been logged out of the test server, I'm just going to quickly try to log back on. I hope this is going to work. So I'm sorry for that short delay right there, I was just logged out of the test server so I had to try to get back on, I'm on again now and... I w I'm just going to quickly continue to talk about the nerfs of the Fosh because the gun is not the only thing that has been changed. If we go to the research tree, we can see that they've changed the engine of the Fosh as well. It used to have a 1200 horsepower engine and now it's only got a 1000 horsepower engine. Now that really changes the way this tank plays. It's I think it's the same engine as, yeah, it's exactly the same engine as the tier 9 Fosh gets. And what that means is, like, up till now, the Fosh 155 used to kind of handle more like a medium tank, but now it's going to play out like a heavy, really. A bit like, for example, an IS-7 or uh, maybe an FV215B. One of these faster tier 10 heavy tanks, maybe comparable to the T110E5 as well. So it's going to be kind of slower. And I do not really see why they changed this engine, because... People were complaining about this autoloader gun and not about the engine. And I mean, the speed was never a source of complaint for this tank. So I do not understand why they did that. And personally, I think they really overdid the nerfs with the Fosh. I understand that they decreased the alpha damage, but I think that they really should have increased the rate of fire. For example, the reload within the drum or the reload of the entire autoloader clip to compensate for that like they did with the other tank destroyers and I think the fact that they didn't do that really kind of kills this tank a bit. Now it's still useful on the battlefield, it's still quite uh, quite a fearsome enemy to face but I think that it really loses a lot of the power that it used to have and I'm not saying that that's generally a bad thing because it was a bit overpowered, I will admit that, but I do not think that justifies the amount of nerfs that they've given this tank and I think it's been over nerfed a bit. Yeah so then we've got the FV215B183 last and as I already pointed out this tank has not been changed at all as well as the Yakpanzer E100 and the Object 263. So I'm just going to quickly talk about some other things that I wanted to point out and that is first of all that I think that the nerfs of the other tier 10 tank destroyers really indirectly buff the Jagdpanzer E100 and the Fighting Vehicle 215B, especially the Jagdpanzer E100, because up till now, the Jagdpanzer E100 always was a bit, well, it was good, but the fact that you could do 850 alpha damage with these other tank destroyers like the Fosh or the Object 268, which is only 200 less than the damage of the Jagdpanzer E100's gun, always kind of meant that... Well, the Jagdpanzer E100 was, the reload time was so long and the damage was not that much higher than that of the other tanks. And that made it a bit, well, a, a bit unnecessary on the battlefield, I felt. It was still a very good tank, but I think now that the alpha damage of the other tank destroyers has been nerfed to 750, the Jagdpanzer E100 will have a really important role on the battlefield again as a big damage dealer because it's one of the few tanks in the game that still has got this really, really big alpha damage. Now, the situation is kind of similar for the FE215B183 as that hasn't been nerfed as well. However, this is kind of a bit of an extra class because it fires this Hesh ammo and just does exorbitant amounts of damage. So I think the nerf of other tank destroyers won't affect this vehicle as much as for example Yakpan Z100 because it's just kind of a totally different class of tank destroyer if I can say so. Also I think that this patch will increase the efficiency of 
tanks like the ISU-152, the Object 704, or for example the Rheinmetall Borsig Waffenträger with the 150mm gun, because these tanks can now at tier 8, for example, deal out 750 damage, exactly the same amount of damage as the tier 10 tank destroyers. And that means, for example, that an Object 704 or an ISC-152 in a tier 10 game will be a lot more important than they used to be, I think. Also, I think that the E-100, the German tier 10 heavy tank here, will benefit a lot from this patch because it's got this 15cm gun that deals out 750 damage, as we can see here. And although it lacks the penetration, I really think that this tank will now have an a lot bigger role as a dealer of a big alpha damage in the game. So... I hope I could give you a good overview and also my opinions on this patch and the changes and implications that it will have on the gameplay in patch 8.11. I hope you enjoyed this video and it, it contains some useful information for you guys. Please let me know in the comments what you think about the nerfs of the tank destroyers. Do you think they're justified? Do you think they overdid it? For example, in the case of a Fosh, please tell me what you think and tell me what you think, how you think that will affect the kind of tier balance and gameplay in these tanks. So yeah, thanks for watching as usual a lot and as I already mentioned in my last video yesterday I will not be here for two weeks because I'm going on a skiing trip and yeah after that I'll have my winter holidays and I'll be able to put up a video nearly every day hopefully. So I hope you're looking forward to that as much as I am and thanks for watching as usual and I hope I've seen one of my next vids. Bye bye.